and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Deepak Nitrite Q2 FY25 earnings conference call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Viral Shah from IIFL Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sagar. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Deepak Nitrite's Tokyo and one hfi 25 earnings conference call. Today, we have with us Mr. Mohit Mehta, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, Director of Finance and Group CFO, and Mr. Som Shekhar Nanda, CFO of Deepak Nitrite Limited. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management team, followed by an interactive Q&A session. At the outset, I would like to clarify that certain statements made or disclosed on the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. To begin, Mr. Malik Mehta will share views on the operating performance and the growth plans of the company, followed by Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, who will who shall take us through the financial and segmental performance. The result documents have been shared with you earlier and have also been posted on the company's website. I now invite Mr. Mehta to share his opening comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Viram. Good evening, everybody. And a warm welcome to all of you on Deepak Nitrite's Q2 and H1 FY25 earnings call. Belated wishes for Diwali and wishing all of you a prosperous new year ahead. Our results documents were shared earlier with you, and I hope you've had an opportunity to glance through them. I'll cover the key financial and operational highlights for the quarter and half year. Mr. Bajai will then present you with a more comprehensive financial overview during the period under review. Following that, we would love to hear your questions. To start with, I'm delighted to share that we have commenced our foray into advanced materials in line with the long-term strategic plan that has been conveyed by our chairman earlier. As exercised by him, selecting the right technology partner has been crucial, and we have dedicated our to finalizing a technology licensing Yesterday, the Board of Directors of Deepak Chemtech Limited, our 100% subsidiary, approved the following. To proceed with the project to manufacture polycarbonate resin involving an investment of approximately 5,000 crores, inclusive of greenfield infrastructure and capital expenditure. This investment will be funded through a balanced mix of debt and equity, contingent upon the completion of detailed engineering. To this end, DCTL has secured a technology partnership by entering into an agreement with affiliates of Trinsio PLC to this technology for the production of polycarbon addresses. Trinsio technology is highly regarded by leading customers for its quality and consistency. Additionally, DCTL will acquire Trinsio's assets, including all proprietary equipment with an annual capacity of 165,000 metric tons, directly located in Stad, Germany. This agreement also grants access to Trinsio's globally recognized caliber resins and trademarks. Now, this marks a significant milestone, and we're actively working towards achieving our goals. And on this note, I would like to take the opportunity to mention that India's demand for polycarbonate resins was approximately 240,000 tons in 2023, and it is projected to grow at a rate exceeding that of India's GDP. Currently, the entire demand is met through imports. The PC resin plant will cater to a wide range of applications across sectors such as mobility, electronics, electrical, medical equipment, aerospace, packaging, and various other emerging and sunrise industries in the country. Additionally, new applications such as EV battery boxes are anticipated to further accelerate demand. 
The first strategy focuses on expanding downstream integration and the PC resin investment aligns with this approach as part of the phenol value chain. Now coming to the operational performance in Q2 and H1. Business sentiment in the quarter remains mixed due to geopolitical uncertainties linked with high interest, limited operating rates in Europe and China, low price destocking and volatile crude oil prices. While there are segments where we witness positive sentiment, a short-term challenge from persistently underpriced product available from China has prevented a broader recovery so far. And this was exacerbated by logistical challenges due to increasing freight rate and sailing times. While a key market like Europe has slowed, emerging markets like Asia present growth opportunities driven by strong domestic consumption and rising onshore valuation. India has reinforced its, uh, its role as a dependable manufacturing hub providing a key alternative to China amid these challenges. As a result, we see manufacturing capacity and capability build-up taking place in India, driving higher requirements for a variety of inputs. Industries such as medical equipment, semiconductors, telecommunication equipment, and industrial products, to name a few, which have not traditionally been spent for Indian manufacturing. So emerging is exciting avenues for growth, and by adding polycarbonate resin, we have positioned ourselves and our product portfolio to be increasingly relevant to these requirements. Now, as a result, our business, which is 84% dependent on domestic customers, has proved to be a resilient bulwark amidst this global volatility. For Q2, Consolidated revenues grew at 14% year-on-year, and for H1, consolidated revenues were higher by 18% on a year-on-year -year basis. This performance was powered by a strong growth in the phenolics business, driven due to improved demand supported by capacities being operated at high utilization, investing upstream de-bottlenecking, and maintaining wallet share across our diversified product range in advanced intermediates. We have also successfully integrated sustainable energy sources, improved key product circularity, and pivoted towards non-traditional customer geographies as we prioritize operating rates across locations. In terms of profitability, EBITDA at 319 crore in Q2 was stable on a year-on-year -year basis. Realizations in advanced intermediates were muted this quarter, and key agrochemical customers in Europe faced certain challenges, reducing, uh, resulting in reduced offtake. While we successfully pivoted to customers in other geographies, volumes were maintained, but resultant profitability was temporarily impacted. Capacity utilization and demand gains in phenolics has substantially offset the impact of generally weak pricing on finished products in the AI segment in the quarter, enabling us to report steady EBITDA on a consolidated basis. For H1, EBITDA increased by 15% year-on-year to 647 crores, with an EBITDA margin of 15%. And this was largely driven by Deepak Penolix, which capitalized on steady realizations and higher volumes by optimizing capacity, and this enables the, custom, uh, the company to serve this increased demand from customers. On the operational front, our domestic business, as I mentioned, contributes 84% of overall revenues versus 80% in the same quarter last year, while exports contributed to 16%. This reflects the shifting of volumes from Europe to Asia in most cases, and we've been able to retain our, increase our wallet share with customers. Coming to our segmental performance, the AI segment generated revenues of 606 crores in Q2. Revenue growth was impacted by soft realizations due to the cyclicality and weak demand trends in end user segments. One of our key customers witnessed the challenge this quarter which impacted their ability to absorb committed volume which we partially offset by successfully redirecting the volumes 
uh, to non-traditional geographies. We're also committed to broadening our customer base by strategically introducing new products and thereby expanding our offerings to reach a wider audience. Revenues in the phenolic segment were higher by 29% year on year. And EBIT margin was maintained at, 30, uh, at 15%. This improvement can be attributed to better realization in the phenol and acetone chain, driven by favorable domestic consumption trends and expanded capacity. The same capacity utilization in the quarter has been a key factor despite a very brutal summer. And this is a consistent performer in the segment. Moving on to updates in our pipeline of projects. The nitric acid project is progressing with commissioning, with the commencement of pre-commissioning activities. And we expect to start manufacturing in H2 FY25. Our other product, uh, projects, including photochlorination, hydrogenation, and nitration blocks, are also commissioning together in quarter four FY25. If you remember, fluorination block was already commissioned in FY24. In the MIBK, MIBC project, along with offsite and utilities, we expect commissioning in H126. The acetophenone project is on track and expected to be commissioned in H126. Additionally, our R&D center near Vadodara is on track for commissioning in March 25. The state-of-the-art facility will significantly enhance our capabilities in advanced chemistry as well as deliver our future growth. These efforts reflect an ongoing commitment to innovation, self-reliance, and sustainable expansion. As we work through a period of geopolitical uncertainty and other economic challenges, BPUC's strategy for future growth remains unwavering. Our strategy is to diversify, focusing on acquiring new customers across several promising markets. Additionally, we're developing new distribution channels and key geographies, which will bring us one step closer to local generic manufacturers and open up new avenues for growth. This approach not only mitigates regional risks, but also positions our best-in-class quality to capture new opportunities at a global scale. Looking ahead, we anticipate a demand uptick from our legacy European customers in the later part of the second half of this year, potentially aligning with the end of China's destocking, leading to improved product pricing. Several projects are nearing completion over the next six months, including nitric acid, nitration, reduction, photochlorination, acetophenone, cumin hydroperoxide, MIBK, and MIBKC, as well as the R&D Center. This is in addition to the recently commissioned projects, including multi-fuel boiler, a SAC unit, advanced process control system, and high-pressure fluorination assets, which will add decretive value looking ahead. New investment announcements will significantly enhance the company's business model and chemistry platforms over the next three years and pave the road for new partnerships and opportunities. I would now hand over the call to Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, who will address this forum and take you through the financial performance and key updates during this period. Thank you, Malik. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining this call of Deepak Nitrite's earnings. I'll take you through the highlights for the financial results for the quarter and half year ended September 30, 2024. Coming to the key developments of this quarter, though Malik has shared already, I am pleased to convey that Board of Directors of DCPL has yesterday approved setting up our project for manufacturing polycarbonate resins. Monica shared all of the details so I just come to the funding. As regards funding of the project, there is no pressure on the cash flow as of now. As we are having liquid surplus of around 800 crores and payment to PC is also the phased manner. Over and above that, we have durable limits also available. We shall come back to the market regarding funding plans in detail in due course once we have evaluated various options in detail. Additionally, we have invested 34 crores in Octo Chemical Limited, 
which has ventured into this is a polycarbonate compound in base product and derivative which will help with a group the strategic objective of forward integration but in particularly when we have our pc uh, plant now uh, going ahead with the uh, as announcement say coming to the operations of qt q2 uh, i am in a challenging landscape in the sense that geopolitical concerns and heavy monsoon added with volatility and the pricing of fuel over materials this of nitrite has delivered a resilient performance for our operations remain highly efficient on a continuous basis our roc is reported at 23% continuing our track record of consistently delivering value in the current challenging macroeconomic landscape you all may appreciate that the project approaching commissioning gradually has started by mall with earlier some of which are bottom line and critical and some are top line we are gradually getting into the high level of integration as one of the kind among the central industries in the country this will be a uh, model which is very very resilient this sort of basket catering to several core uh, sector and users and places is in a very solid and certain positioning globally coming to our financial performance on the operating front domestic business growth is good at 1214 crore and 3435 crore in q2 and h1 respectively export revenue were at 318 crore in q2 and 724 crore in h1 on a control basis our domestic export is good at 84 is 16 in q2 fy 20 as against 820 last year in h1 fy 25 Considered that the revenue grew at 18 percent to 4,239 crores for 16,595 crores in H1 and H2 transport, driven by performance of seven segments. EBITDA grew at 15 percent and 647 crores compared to 561 crores in H1 and H2 transport. Margins came at 15 percent in H1 and H2 transport. PBT and PET came at 539 crores and 397 crores. Up 13 percent, 12 percent respectively. In Q2 FY25, consumer business only were up 14 percent to 2,000 crores as compared to rupees 1,795 crores in Q2 FY24. EBITDA at 2019 crores was flat on year-on-year basis. Margins moderated at 16 percent on the basis of high overhead costs and other utilities, along with lower recovery from a few products. PBT and PET stood at 264 crores and 194 crores respectively. Profitability was aligned with the operational performance of the company. Moving to the segmental performance in the advanced industry segment, they only stood at 606 crores in Q2 FY25 versus 670 crores in FY24, while EBIT stood at 47 crores, translated into 8% margin in the quarter under review. In H2O FY25, they only stood at 1,322 crores. And EBIT came in at 114 crores, translating into a margin of 9 percent due to current environment, as explained earlier. The finally segment delivered an encouraging performance with revenue growth of 29 percent by year-on-year to 1,443 crores in Q2 FY25 versus 1,120 crores in Q2 FY24. EBIT was 215 crores at an EBIT margin of 15 percent in the quarter. In H1 FY25, revenue grew at 35 percent to 2,907 crores. In EBIT, was higher by 64 percent year-on-year at 422 crores, translating into margin of 15 percent. On the balance sheet front, the company's financial position is significantly enhanced, and the company continues to maintain zero debt position on a net basis with a net worth of 5,125 crores on considered basis. On ongoing projects are progressing well, and despite bit of unexpected delay in Q2 due to very heavy monsoon in Gujarat, we are on track to commission most of the projects in the next six months to eight months. Our R&D team is driving innovation, focusing on developing new products that will support the expansion of specialty chemical capabilities. The new plants will enhance our sales reliance on essential raw materials and industrial proximity will be fully operational. Lastly, our R&D center near Avadogra is moving ahead on schedule with 66% allocated capex of approximately under 15 crores being utilized. We are confident that the addition to the, of the R&D center related capabilities will elevate the company's position further. This center will also cater to various requirements of polycarbonate compounding strategies, and this will help us in catering to the upcoming surge in demand for sunrise sectors in the country. With that, I would now request moderator to open the forum for questions at the session, please.
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes from Nirav Jimoria from Annual Corporation. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations to the entire team of Deepak for uh, acquiring the assets abroad and bringing those assets to India. So, the question basically is on the polycarbonate side only. So, uh, one, we have announced that 1,65,000 tons of uh, PC would be put up here in India at a capex of 5,000 crores. Uh, if you can also share your thought process on the upstream capacities of BP and phenol, uh, when can we hear uh, on both of these fronts? And uh, if possible, if you can quantify the size of the capacities for both of them, that would be helpful. Okay. First of all, Happy New Year, uh, Neeraj. And uh, just to clarify, uh, it is part of our strategy to link, uh, you know, phenol. Uh, Expansion as well as bisphenol A, which are the key intermediates that are required in order to manufacture polycarbonates. So it's simply that you know, we were able to tie up our technology as well as get uh, you know assets which are uh, purpose built for this capacity earlier. I think we, in a couple of months we will be able to update you with regards to the investment as well as the capacities for uh, these other two products. Suffice to say that as per our usual uh, strategy, we will ensure that the assets are right size so that we can not only consume all the production internally, but also have some volume to sell because BPA is also a 100% import into India. Right. So we'll be able to cater to this. In phenol, we will be able to manufacture enough so that we are able to consume it into BPA as well as continue to maintain our wallet share with uh, India's growing demand. So, to this, uh, we are at an advanced stage of discussions on technology front on this also. Though phenol and BPA are known products, but it's better to evaluate our technology vis-a-vis -vis the current technology available in the market. And we'll, when we come out, we'll come out with the best technology available in the market so that we do not have any future. I mean, uh, you've you seen how panel is performed. So similar thing, again, we are trying and we will see that we get the best technology. Got it. So last time when we announced the CapEx for all the projects where the CapEx is currently undergoing and getting commissioned, uh, uh, for this, everything is coming up at a new land parcel, I believe. So, what would be the size of the uh, size of the area under which the entire uh, facility would be accommodated? If you can just share, because last time, if I'm not wrong, it was close to around uh, 180 to 200 acres of land under which the capex was undergoing. So, uh, if you can share uh, in terms of the size of the land requirement for such a big capex to accommodate. So, uh, I mean, we have uh, a plan where we can accommodate it uh, you know at uh, you know in an expanded manner or in a more compact manner uh, we are also seeing how we can integrate this along with uh, uh, potential future expansions and other products so the amount of space can go from anywhere between about a 160 acre plot to about 300 to 400 acres again depending on how well uh, you know how much we are integrating with other products which will be uh, you know sharing a lot of these facilities just to clarify also that the investment that we are making right now will also permit us uh, some headroom with regards to the bottlenecking as we move forward got it got it and sir for this uh, uh, technology tire do we have to pay anything uh, to the technology partner as one time fee or uh, any sort of understanding fee uh, if you can just uh, help us understand. 
Then, and you know, I just said in my uh, earlier remarks that we it is said in a phased manner. Okay, so in stages. But uh, you know, there's there's no royalty like one would normally have in most uh, you know technology tie-ups. There is a technology fee and there is an asset purchase. Got it. Got it. The second bit is on the nitric acid side. You mentioned that uh, the uh, pre-commissioning activities is going to start sooner and plant would be commissioned in second half of H1, uh, second half of FY25. So is it now a right time to uh, say like what sort of capacity of nitric acid we are coming up with and uh, would it be entirely for the captive purpose or will be selling something in the market also given the kind of ramp up in the volumes for our uh, uh, existing product baskets? So uh, our, uh, our pre-commissioning activities have already begun. Okay. To clarify. Uh, and the capacity that we have is uh, enough for our current consumption as well as our future growth uh, uh, opportunities that we have identified. In the interim, of course, uh, you know, we will also be able to participate uh, you know, in the market, but uh, our long-term strategy continues to remain making it for consuming it. And we see good opportunities for growth in uh, nitrate and uh, products. Got it, got it. So last bit from my side is on the advanced intermediate, like you mentioned that uh, there was pressure in terms of the agrochemical customers where we do campaign based uh, uh, sales. So I think our turnover on a sequential basis was down close to 100 crore. So uh, was the impact higher than the 100 crore when some of our legacy products and the existing product baskets would have covered up some sort of those lost sales was, or this entire 100 crore dip in the sales is from those customers and you mentioned that those customers are again coming back in H2. So this sales would be again filled up with. No, I mean, there is no loss of customer, uh, Nero. No, no, okay. I'm not saying loss of customers. I'm saying that the customers which have deferred their purchases maybe because of the slowdown. So yeah. I was just trying to understand that this 100 crore impact, what we have seen in terms of top line on a quarter on quarter basis. Uh, I was just trying to understand that was the impact more than the 100 crores and other products of ours in the uh, advanced intermediates would have compensated some sort of uh, those lost sales. Uh, just wanted to understand that. No, so 100 crores was not linked to you know any single customer or two customers. It was linked more to the uh, end segment, which is agrochemicals. Uh, so just to clarify, agrochemicals as a segment a lot of uh, customers have been, uh, you know, constantly down revising their volume guidance okay. over the year, and in anticipation for the end of this uh, destocking cycle, and are now also uh, communicating back to us their confidence about uh, significant improvement in volume pickup compared to the current and uh, you know Q1 starting from uh, you know, towards the end of Q3 or Q4 onwards. Okay. So we can anticipate that you know, this is the agrochemical slowdown that every other Indian company which also participates in this space was referring to. And uh, we also concur with the general uh, feedback that by and large, CY25 looks more positive than CY24. Got it, sir. Be at a festival. Wishes to the entire team and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question comes from Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Brokings. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, again, uh, the first question is on polycarbonate. So, one, in terms of the uh, existing facility in Germany, uh, how old is the plant and any specific reason why a Trincio wants to uh, sell the entire asset? And another clarification on the same, uh, based on the current margin environment on polycarbonate, uh, what would be our expected payback? Because in Phenol Acetone project, we had a payback of for two and a half years, given the margin environment was very strong. So what is the expectation on the polycarbonate project? Thank you. 
Okay. So, uh, Rohit, first of all, uh, thank you. Just to uh, add that the capacity for 165 kT in Stad is, uh, you know, their current capacity. The reason that they uh, wanted to move their assets and the reason that we bought this is because we made it clear in our engagement with them that uh, yeah. we were not interested in taking just a single line. We were interested in taking this if they were interested in vacating the market and working with Deepak where we would supply whatever they are so they're not exiting the business, they're just exiting the manufacturing of polycarbonate resin. They continue to remain invested in the intellectual property development compounding of this product and they will look at buying the resin from Deepak as we relocate their assets to India. This also gives us the opportunity to supply to this growing Indian ecosystem. But at the same time, uh, at a manufacturing cost which may be considerably lower than the current climate that uh, European manufacturers are facing. And Deepak has a good experience in seeing how to optimize and de-bottleneck as it learns the nuances of these new processes. So not only is Trincio happy that its end customers will continue to remain happy with them, but it has also communicated that many of these customers are investing in uh, capacities in India. And it wants to ensure that it doesn't lose these customers so they don't have to go somewhere else to be able to get those compounds. And with an Indian manufacturing base, Trincio will also be able to communicate to many of these customers that they stand de-risked. So I think uh, to start off with, while it looks like a licensing agreement and an asset purchase agreement, I would say that it is the beginning of a comprehensive partnership moving forward. Now, uh, sorry, what was the second question? So, as you got your, uh, the quality of asset, it's so quality. quality. Our team has visited, inspected our technical team, and this quality is really good. The advantage with this asset is that you can see a running plant, you know. It's very rare that you buy assets and you see a running plant where it is actually performing and our team is getting trained there, our technical team. So that's an error. But and in, again, the technology is from Trincio and the assets are also from Trincio, so that makes it all the more a, a very good combination for us. So there is no issue as such. And this also helps us, and please appreciate this, also helps us, uh, helps us in reducing the cap, uh, capex commencement plan by at least uh, 8 to 10 months or minimum year. You know, that's a major advantage we are getting here. So overall, if you see, it's a very good deal for Deepak, win-win for us and for Trincio both. And uh, I'll just add one thing. You know, this plant was put up when I would say money was cheaper. So the kind of uh, MOCs that went into the construction of this plant, the assets, they were they are very, uh, you know, exotic MOCs. Today, if someone was to put up a brand new plant, they might try to see how to uh, optimize on some of these MOCs. So in a sense, we are getting a plant that has demonstrated performance, is in top class condition, and happens to have. Uh, yeah, a large part of its asset base be, I would say, a little bit over-engineered. And that gives us a lot of comfort as well in being able to see how over a period of time we can start to eke out more and more value uh, and throughput from the assets. Sure, uh, this was really helpful. Uh, the second question, uh, again, uh, on the CAPEX front, so out of the 14,000 crores CAPEX uh, plan till 27, uh, how much uh, have we committed till now and how much is left? And you can just give a broader understanding of FI25 and FI26 CAPEX. Thank you. So around 7,000 we have uh, committed, including this 5,000, plus earlier 2,000 what we have just shared about nitric acid and all. And balance 7,000, 
is there as part of MOU where uh, the phase two will come in. As Molly was telling in the uh, earlier question regarding VPN, phenol, and all these things. So this all total is fourteen thousand. Right, and for FI twenty five and twenty six, what could be the capex number? So these are the capexes which will it's not going to happen this year. You know, this is till twenty seven and or twenty eight. I think trends around by end of 27, 28 beginning, you know. So this is this will take us for uh, for, for next three years minimum. Right, so the parts that we have not announced will also be done sort of in parallel, but we have you know we're still in the process of tying up certain loose ends. Once we do, we will be able to add those announcements, and they will be done in parallel in terms of execution. Got it. Uh, thanks a lot, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Krishan Parwani from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Malik. Bye. Um, Happy New Year, and congrats on Diab for the polycarbonate. Uh, Thank you so much. Happy New Year. so just a couple of uh, points on that so let's say if you were to build this plant of 165 ktpa what would have been uh, the capex that you would have to incur i mean apart from the uh, technological fee or or the fee that licensing fee that you you are paying the uh kitchen right see uh, this plant has a saving definitely because it's a uh, second hand plant but We are developing a site. Why five thousand? And because we are developing a site, which is a green field. You know, there you have infrastructure costs, which is a part of this capex. So a lot of infrastructure costs also we have to incur because we have to make the site ready for all future investments. Of course, <coughs> not the entire infrastructure is allocated to this, but a significant amount is allocated to this, and hence. Uh, the uh, total investment is higher, but this will suffice for the future. Already, uh, site will be there, you know. In that case, so there is a saving on this, but you have and then shifting of the plant also needs some expense when you are dismantling all these things. So I we don't want to specify the amount, how much is saving, but yes, there is in, even after this there is a saving on the total capex. Got and it. it's a it's a good amount of saving without going into details. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fine. Uh, as long as they're saving, that's fine. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there is saving on the capex as well as the timeline, as Mr. Pandey mentioned. Yes, got it. And secondly, um, I think in the past we harped upon uh, in the past calls we harped upon the technology uh, which does not rely on fortunation. So uh, does this one that you've uh, uh, procured uh, does this rely on fortunation? If yes, how would be source? How do you be sourcing the same? This is a process which is called interfacial polymerization. The raw material for this are bisphenol A, chlorine, carbon monoxide, and uh, chain terminators. So uh, it is. Let me put it this way: it is not only one of the most mature uh, technologies in the world. It has the widest range of application, the highest quality, and uh, an absolutely uh, impeccable and sterling uh, safety standard. So there are there are there is a three-phase safety system. Uh, all of it without requiring any human intervention and let me clarify that uh, the only products that we will be moving will be chlorine and bisphenol a along with whatever small volume of chain terminators that one uses in the manufacturing but you can consider that bisphenol a energy and chlorine are the raw materials here yeah you got it but i think when you are mixing chlorine and carbon monoxide it anyways is a fuzzy right co2 co2 anyways so it's is is probably basically you are starting from the scratch and then not buying fuzzy so it's like you are in a way kind of uh, reacting bisphenol a with fuzzy in a way correct let okay let me reemphasize this it is interfacial polymerization mm -hmm. with the key raw materials being chlorine and bpa mm. and what you're talking about is a hyco plant which is part of this capex which we have already projected part of this 5000 crore investment which is physically located 
on site mm. uh, the reactions are done in a tank and tank design with uh, electronic trips across the board there's no human intervention that is required mm. and uh, the bpa is reacted within milliseconds within the plant and plant design and comes out clean and there are chlorine destruction systems also that are put in place across the board so this uh, actually comes across as possibly the safest technology worldwide hmm. got it got it thank you malik bhai and just last bit i think uh, in your previous comment you mentioned that uh, this this does not include the uh, bpa right you will have to still purchase the bpa from outside and and until we manufacture yes okay okay so this 5000 is entirely for uh, this this uh, for, uh, for this pc right pc for polycarbonate hyco associated <laughs> utilities site and site infrastructure along with uh, you know additional uh, capacities that are already going to be built for easy expansion because it's important for us to consider expansion opportunities without needing to stop manufacturing or without needing to make uh, you know a lot of modular additions understood uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for patiently answering my questions malik bhai uh, wish you all the best thank you so much thank you appreciate it and happy new year thank you the next question comes from vivek rajmani from morgan stanley please go ahead um hi sir um thank you for the opportunity uh, first of uh, congratulations on this uh, investment uh brief an extension on you know what the previous participant was asking uh you approved an investment of about 50 billion rupees uh, with the startup in f528 end uh given that uh, trinsio had sold this asset for about 52 million dollars uh would it be possible to give a broad break up of you know how the monies would be spent uh, you obviously mentioned uh, what all are going into it for the previous participant uh, but would it be possible to give a broad break up of how the 5000 crores would be spent and given that you know you for the relocation you you are entailing about 3 years uh, what are the key milestones that you would think about uh for the relocation to happen over the course of 3 years that's the first question vivek i think you can uh, rest assured that we've taken a, a good and accurate uh, capital investment estimation and i think if i'm not mistaken my finance uh, team can correct me mr patel can correct me but we have taken uh, you know contingencies uh, margin money cost of you know relocation as well as cost of you know ensuring compliance in terms of how it will be moved so there will be an entire strategy in place to know how the asset is moved from there to here and the uh, you know the payments that have to be made again to clarify the cost of ensuring that the products i mean the assets are ready for us to move is not in our scope that belongs to trinsio and they are uh, going to be doing that part so uh, in terms of how the money will be spent and you know how the assets will be brought here there is a uh, you know there is a strategy that is put in place and it is reasonably tight keeping international experts as well as indian experts in the loop uh, i think over a period of time uh, we will be able to share some more color on that or even better i'm sure that the investors would love to get to know more on a face to face uh, interaction with mr mehta maybe in the forthcoming uh, months uh, sure so that makes sense and um, it's really helpful uh, just a, a, a small other clarification when you've mentioned in terms of you know the size of the land parcel uh, to kind of you know cater to all of your uh, investments uh, i imagine the acquisition uh, would happen progressively over the next 3 4 years as you finalize these various investments would that be a fair uh, assessment uh, no you don't uh, i think the land is taken care of of course the infrastructure okay. development and the investment on those fronts will happen side by side but uh, i think the land parcel is uh, well accounted for great sir 
And just one last question on the advanced intermediate side, uh, you know, we focused on the PC investment. I just wanted to get some color on, you know, uh, what's happening on the ground and how we should think about the demand and, you know, earnings trajectory over the next few quarters. Thank you. Present tense, future perfect. But, in, in, uh, you know, joking aside, I, one can assume that, uh, you know, a lot of the end segments where uh, the standalone business is operating uh, will continue to see, you know, a similar level of volatility that we saw in Q1 and Q2 up until the end of uh, Q3. And we are seeing uh, recovery in a lot of the products that we are in. But one can anticipate that Q3 will be a mixed bag and Q4 will be much better. This is the same thing that I had also highlighted in the Q1 con call and we stand aligned with that even uh, in November. So all of the indications seem to lean towards uh, normalizing of the global environment in CY26, uh, 25. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you so much for all the answers and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, Morikai. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the for the tech type here. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, seeking some more clarifications here. Uh, Earlier, we had gone ahead and set up that, you know, the, the pilot compounding plant, the PC compounding plant, uh, to, to be sure of which segments we want to get into. Uh, and if I hear you right, uh, with this technology, uh, although you mentioned it's slightly dated, uh, there is it's safe and ability to, and ability to enter into multiple uh, end use segments. Uh, so just trying to understand, uh, are we focusing on much larger addressable opportunity opportunity now versus what you were thinking of earlier and and uh, the tech team or the tech support from Tensio, will it be supporting us in terms of ramping up all these investments? So to clarify, uh, you know, it's not it's not dated. Chemical manufacturing plants, uh, you know, they're not, uh, you know, they, let's put it this way, you know, these are not plants which are expected to last five years or 10 years or 15 years. I would re-emphasize that the kind of safety standards that this plant has and the impeccable record that it has over its years of operation, I would say that hence this actually is a better plant than if we were to put up a greenfield asset today. Along with the fact that its operational track record means that it has a stable of customers which appreciate the uh, quality and the consistency and so these products have, uh, you know, approval uh, cycles which may go into eight, nine months, a year, two years, even longer in certain cases like medical devices. So having uh, an asset which has already gone through that, having a, a technology partner who is there, who is also putting, I mean, who is also partially a customer who is also working with you to see how to partner up with end consumers. All of this means that all the investments that we have made so far in our compounding facility will get uh, amplified multifold times with this. So uh, it dramatically broad phases and eases our acceptance into the applications which we have been targeting. So. In every regard, it is simply easy to say that the speed of approval at customer ends will be much, much faster than if we were to do everything from the start. This is the value of a technology and business partner that is working alongside us. And because it is a technology and business partner working alongside us, you can imagine that it is in their best interest to see how quickly we can get the product out because their customers are already, even today, announcing investments to uh, you know put up capacities in India for consumption. So it is also in Trinzio's best interest to see how we can get on spec and exceed the production capacity that we are transferring from start to India.
uh, sure sure that that's helpful and uh, just a clarification uh, uh, the the royalty payment that we have made uh, is for the not a royalty there is no repeating tax fee the tax fee yeah uh, correction yeah. that the tax fee that we have paid uh, it is irrespective of whether the capacity is 165 or going ahead it could be probably a million ton will that no, be fair assumption in the case and it should never be construed as that it is you know it is for 165 and there is a headroom available you know which uh, which is a no, i mean a normal technology agreement which will have uh, you know today for example if the phenol plant that we are manufacturing was designed for certain capacity when you exceed that capacity you work with the technology supplier and you do pay them something it is obviously much less than what it would be if it was a brand new license but again let me reemphasize if i make a million tons from the same asset yeah uh, there will be a payment because there is an expectation of support as well sure sure so sure. it is not a royalty there is no repeating yeah. the payment it's not an annual thing yeah yeah great and just lastly uh, on the on the core advanced intermediates as well as you know the fine chemicals bit Uh, you did mention that uh, we do expect some uptake let's say starting q4 uh, but just trying to understand it better uh, the pricing led pressure that we are seeing across most of the products uh, is there any visibility of improvement over there and how does it impact or is it differs uh, our new product launches given the given the lower pricing as well as the overall margin that we can earn in this business so the new products that we are uh, planning to launch i think they have a clear rationale and an assumption and agreement also with customers that there will be a path through of raw material cost increases or decreases both ways so our margin is protected on those investments we ourselves also invest in uh, you know upstream uh, so that our margin expansion is in our control and uh, yeah, finally with regard to the prices I would not comment so much on the prices, but I would say that moving forward from Q4 onwards, we are anticipating with reasonable confidence that there will be margin expansion. Will this be the case for each and every product? No, but it will be the case for enough to be able to have a meaningful improvement in our EBITDA percentage, even on a standalone basis. So, if you, if you see the product, what we are going to commission in the uh, second half and maybe in the third year or so. uh it's all uh backward integrated by and large or or there is a integration like nitric acid like uh, btc bts like mibk mibc you know these are all integrated so it has, it is definitely a margin equity it doesn't affect what is the global this thing and but this it is a part of our overall strategy so i don't think this temporary this thing will affect any any such decision or any such thing sure uh, thank you padesh uh, for for that uh, thank you monica thanks thank you thank you the next question comes from chirag shah from white pine investment management private limited please go ahead yeah hi uh, thank you i'm monica uh, sir two key questions the first one is polycarbonate so i'm a bit confused with 5k the the five cr the five thousand crore capex that you have now which which is starting in end twenty eight now everything will come by end twenty eight or this transfer of asset will happen sooner and some production and revenue flow would happen before that so, so what all is included in this uh, in this uh, this five thousand crore capex is year mark for this one sixty five k capacity that you are that will be transferring or it is a much larger capacity you are creating. it is part how it will ramp up picture it is part of a larger picture yeah. we uh, which uh, i had also announced in a previous investor call that we may consider doing uh, you know these two things in parallel where you know you make the uh, the hico and the pc plant together you lump them together and you lump the larger uh, you know sorry you lump the second phenol and bpa plant together and if there is a gap if there's no gap fantastic it is end to end and if there is a gap for that period of time 
you purchase the bisin or lay from outside. Or you sell the bisin or lay while the PC plant is being constructed. And this is continuing to remain within that uh, ambit as I had mentioned. So it is just coincidental, call it whatever, that we tied up the agreement for licensing and asset sale for polycarbonates earlier. And the 5,000 crores that we have announced is part of the bigger picture, which also includes phenol, bisphenol, uh, you know, methyl methacrylates as well as aniline. So, I mean, a lot of these things, they're not necessary to connect to each other at the same time, but when they do, it looks beautiful and obviously it will reduce the overall payback of the uh, entire asset, but each one of these stand alone as a, you know, as a large viability based on uh, saying, okay, there may be a situation where one comes up and then six months later another one comes up. That's okay. As we've already mentioned earlier, there is a tie up for propylene and hydrogen, and this is already in the news. This gives you a clarity that there is, uh, you know, there is a plan for consumption of the same Hence, there is already in place a strategy to connect the upstream manufacturing as well as the downstream consumption uh, into polycarbonates, as well as the further downstream efforts that we put in place with regards to compounding now in partnership with Fridzio. So this forms a, you know, a very nice supply chain, and it affords us a large amount of flexibility in ensuring that we do the right thing at the right cost without being held, uh, you know, almost at gunpoint to any single technology suppliers with. So we have the flexibility, we have the ability to spend at the right time, and we have a very strong ability to integrate for end-to-end -end, uh, value accretion.